subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 27th of July. India's top court upholds enforcement directorate's powers in money laundering cases amid protests. US sanctions hindering government services in Afghanistan says foreign minister Muttaki. And Sri Lanka soup kitchens feed the poor hit by economic crisis. And now for all the details. India's apex court on Wednesday upheld the powers of Financial Crime Fighting Agency ED, the Enforcement Directorate to arrest and seize properties under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The verdict came amid protests by the main opposition Congress party over the questioning of party president Sonia Gandhi by the ED. for the third day in the national herald money laundering case India Supreme Court on Wednesday upheld the powers of Financial Crime Fighting Agency ED the enforcement directorate to arrest and seize properties under PMLA the prevention of money laundering act as it dismissed various petitions challenging provisions of the law the three judge bench said The power of arrest granting bail seizure of property are all outside the ambit of the Code of Criminal Procedure. It is not mandatory for ED officers to disclose the ground of arrest at the time of detaining an accused in a money laundering case. It is also not necessary to give copy of complaint to the accused the bench said. The court verdict came amid protests by the main opposition Congress against the suspension of over 20 lawmakers after they created ruckus in the parliament a day earlier over price rise issue and against the summoning of party president Sonia Gandhi by the ED for a third day in the National Herald money laundering case. The case was filed by a lawmaker of ruling BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party. Congress leaders blamed BJP is misusing central investigation agencies for political vendetta. और इस ED और CBI की दुरुपयोग जिस धरल्ले से हो रहे हैं सर हिंदुस्तान में लगता है हिंदुस्तान के सरकार ने विपक्ष मुत हिंदुस्तान बनाना चाहते हैं लेकिन लोकतंत्र खत्म हो जाएगी अगर विपक्ष मुख हिंदुस्तान बनेगी कांग्रेस लीडर्स वर आल्सो डिटेन्ड फॉर अ सेकंड डे ऑन वेंसडे बीजेपी नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट जेपी नड्डा स्पीकिंग ऑन सुप्रीम कोर्ट्स वर्डिक्ट सेड द लॉ इज टेकिंग इट्स कोर्स एंड द कांग्रेस पार्टीज अटेम्प्ट टू कीप वन फैमिली अबव द लॉ विल नॉट वर्क मीनवाइल द 24 सस्पेंडेड लॉ मेकर्स वाउ टू कंटिन्यूड प्रोटेस्ट इन द पार्लियामेंट प्रिमाइसेस for 50 hours to demand revocation of their suspension for remaining part of the week India's foreign minister S.J. Shankar has expressed grief over the death of two Indian security personnel among three United Nations peacekeepers during the anti-UN protest in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo this week taking to Twitter J Shankar demanded the perpetrators be brought to justice India's paramilitary BSF personnel at C Shishupal Singh and at C Sanwala Ram Vishnoy were deployed as part of the United Nations mission there according to authorities three United Nations peacekeepers and at least 12 civilians were killed during a second day of the anti UN protest on Tuesday The protests were spurred by complaints that the UN mission known as MONUSCO has failed to protect civilians against militia violence which has raged for years Demonstrations began on Monday in the city of Goma and spread on Tuesday to Butembo where a UN soldier and two UN police with the mission were shot dead. UN deputy spokesman Farhan Haq told reporters in New York. In news from Pakistan, triggering fresh political uncertainty in Pakistan, the country's apex court on Tuesday announced that Parvez Ilahi, the ally of ousted Premier Imran Khan, would be the new chief minister of Punjab province. ordering the ruling coalition candidate Hamza Shahbaz was wrongfully handed control after a vote last week while Imran Khan's PTI party celebrated the verdict ruling PMLN leaders called it judicial coup 
Pakistan Supreme Court on Tuesday ruled to hand control of the country's most populous and politically crucial Punjab province to Chaudhry Parvez Ilahi, backed by ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan, triggering fresh political uncertainty in the country amidst a crippling economic crisis. PMLQ leader Ilahi was administered oath of office by President Arif Alvi late on Tuesday after the court ruled that the Punjab Assembly Speaker had wrongfully handed the position of Chief Minister to the candidate of the ruling coalition, Hamza Shahbaz, in a vote last week. Following the verdict, PTI Chairman Imran Khan called his supporters to take to the streets and celebrate. He said he appreciates judges for upholding the constitution and law against all manner of threats and abuse. Information Minister Mariam Aurangzeb told reporters on Wednesday that the decision has not been accepted by the people and ruling PMLN will decide the future line of action after consulting coalition partners. وہ نہ پاکستان کی عوام کو قابل قبول ہوگا نہ فریقین کو قابل قبول ہوگا کیونکہ یہ نہیں ہو سکتا کہ آپ پنجاب کے اوپر چوری کر کے جو آر ٹی ایس بٹھا کر دو ہزار اٹھارہ میں مسلط کیا تھا اس کو دوبارہ پنجاب کے اوپر مسلط کریں The development gives Imran Khan's campaign for fresh elections a shot in the arm The ousted premier has been holding protests across the country for snap general elections which are not due until late next year Moving on, the Tashkent Conference on Afghanistan began on Tuesday in Uzbekistan after a day's delay that saw participation of diplomats of several countries including India, Pakistan, China and Russia. Afghanistan's foreign minister at the conference held the United States imposed sanctions responsible for hindering the activity of current government. The international conference to garner support for the economic and social revival of Afghanistan began on Tuesday in Tashkent, capital of Uzbekistan, after a day's delay. The head of the Afghan delegation, acting foreign minister Amir Khan Mutakki, said at the conference that the U.S. imposed sanctions on Afghanistan have hindered the activity of the current Afghan government. Mutakki called the decades-long war and U.S. sanctions as the main reasons for the poverty in Afghanistan and said that the Islamic Emirate is ready to engage with the world based on mutual respect. He asserted that a destabilized Afghanistan is harmful for everyone. In a message to the conference, Uzbek President Shavkat Mirzi Yoyev called on the Afghan government to demonstrate a strong will to take decisive measures to counter terrorism and break ties with all international terrorist organizations. The European Union's envoy for Afghanistan, Thomas Nicholson, tweeted that at the Tashkent conference, he underlined the serious human rights situation, as reported by UNAMA, including the rights of women and girls, ethnic and sectarian groups, notably Hazaras and Shias, and media freedom. The conference comes as no country has so far recognized the current Afghan government. Dozens of delegations of governments and international organizations from Europe, the Middle East, Asia and other regions took part in the conference. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka has been crippled by a devastating economic crisis for several months with shortages of fuel, food and other necessities as foreign exchange reserves needed for essential imports dropped to record lows. With no fuel and no money to buy food, there aren't many places to go for hungry Sri Lankans except for soup kitchens that are feeding the poor hit by the crisis. With no fuel and no money to buy food, there aren't many places to go for hungry Sri Lankans except for a local soup kitchen. Before meal times, a queue of hungry residents snakes around the corner of the building in Colombo, where the kitchen is located, eagerly waiting for a free vegetarian meal. The country's worst economic crisis since independence from Britain in 1948 has driven up the price of essential commodities. An acute fuel shortage has not only forced cars off the road, but people are now unable to cook even if they have food supplies, as cooking gas is scarce. Anagate <laughs> 
ආධාරයක් හරි ඉල්ලන්නේ මම නිකන්නේ මේ මගේ දරුවන්ට දීලා කරලා මම ඇරලා ගියත් කමන්න මේ කුණුකේ දිරලා යයි නාමේ නොදිරා යයි ඉතින් අම්මේ උඹට හෙන ගහපන් කියන්න මේ ලෝකෙට මට කියන්න බෑනේ මහත්තයා ඒ නිසා තමයි මම මේ දේකවල් මේ ජීවිතේ ඉතින් අනාගතේ මගේ දරුවෝ තමයි ඉතින් අනාගතේ Akila Alts is the chief operating officer of the Bethany Christian Life Center Alice's non-profit has set up soup kitchens locally referred to as community kitchens at 12 of its churches and has been serving some 1500 people daily since June. Hunger is common for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. If you are hungry, you are in need. So the community kitchen concept is open for anyone who is hungry to come and eat. Meanwhile, in a makeshift kitchen a short distance from Sri Lanka's parliament, two dozen volunteers boil rice. dice onions and scrape the flesh from coconuts cooking over open wood fires months of anti government protests that came to a head earlier this month after thousands stormed government buildings bringing down former president kotabaya rajapaksa have crossed religious and ethnic lines in the diverse country moving on to news from bangladesh Bangladesh has sought negotiations for a loan from the International Monetary Fund finance minister AHM Mustafa Kamal told local media this week as the country joins South Asian neighbors Pakistan and Sri Lanka in seeking help to cope with mounting pressures on the economies Bangladesh has asked the International Monetary Fund IMF to start negotiations for a loan The country's finance minister AHM Mustafa Kamal told the Pratham Alo newspaper this week while adding that the economy was no way in trouble. The IMF was requested to start a formal negotiation to obtain loans for balance of payments and budget assistance. When and how much loan will be available will depend on IMF, Kamal said in a report published on Wednesday. Earlier on Tuesday, Bangladesh Daily Star newspaper reported that the country wanted 4.5 billion US dollars from the IMF the country's 416 billion dollar economy has been one of the fastest growing in the world for years but rising energy and food prices because of the Russia Ukraine war has inflated its import bill and the current account deficit the south asian country's economic mainstay is its export oriented garments industry which could suffer if sales fall in its main markets in Europe and the United States because of a slowdown in the global economy after garments remittances are the second highest source of foreign currency for Bangladesh Bangladesh foreign exchange reserves fell to 39.67 billion dollars as of July 20 sufficient for 5.3 months worth of imports from 45.5 billion dollars a year earlier Its July to May current account deficit was 17.2 billion dollars compared with a deficit of 2.78 billion dollars in the year earlier period as its trade deficit widened and remittances fell. On the third day of the ongoing holy monsoon month of Shravan, people in Nepal celebrated the festival of Gathe Mangal in memory of mythical demon Ghantakarna's death. Residents in Kathmandu carried their children and made them jump across the fire to ward off the habit of bad wetting and improving their health as part of the ritual. Residents in Nepal's Kathmandu city recently observed the festival of Gathe Mangal during which they carried their children and made them jump across the fire till the effigy of Ghanta Karn demon deity falls down sending plumes of smoke into the air falling on the third day of the holy monsoon month of shravan the festival also known as Ghanta Karna Chaturdashi is celebrated in memory of Ghanta Karna's death it is believed that making children mostly infants cross the fire ward of the habit of bed wetting and also improve their health अरे घटना करना चला है बच्चा चाहिए धुआं में घुमा अन तैयार है घुमाए पी है तो घुमाए पीछे रुंच हटा कि हरा कि Gathe Mangal festival is also celebrated by cleaning the garbage by calling it a ghost to get rid of it as it does not pay attention to sanitation during the planting period and causing grief to various insects at this time Later in the evening the idol of Ghanta Karna is dragged to a nearby river and burned 
According to legends, the demon Ghantakarna used to terrorize villagers by stealing children and women of the village, demanding money and other gifts as a ransom for their release. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.